Sunita Narayan and thank you so much for listening to my show. I try every time to bring you an issue and to unravel the science and the politics of it, but in particular to try and explain what we need to do. This time I want to talk about an issue that we at least living in Delhi know so well, the issue of air pollution that literally takes away our right to breathe, our most fundamental right. And the fact that the air turns so foul that it impacts our bodies, it impacts our health and literally makes us choke and die. The question that is always on the top of our mind is what do we do? And why is it that in winter it is particularly bad? So firstly, let me take the question of winter. The fact is pollution sources remain the same but it is worst in winter, particularly in the areas of North India where there will be no wind during the winter season and the inversion, which means cold air settles and the pollutants get trapped closer to the ground. This makes it even worse for us. And this is why our fight against pollution has to be one in which we can actually combat it in the worst months. The second big question is what do we do? And this really is the big challenge that we have and I want to talk about it today. But firstly, I want you to understand that the reason why air pollution is particularly an issue that we need to care about is that we know that it impacts our health. There is more than enough data today to tell us, tinier the particulate matter, the more it affects our bodies. And now it is there is more than enough evidence. It's not just about lungs. It's not about uh, just about asthma, which we know, but it's also a cause of something like a heart disease. The other thing we know is that air pollution is a great equalizer. We know this, and I say this often, and let me repeat it to you, uh, because it is important for us to understand the reality of air pollution. You know, when it comes to many pollution sources, we, particularly the richer uh, communities, feel that it will not affect them. And it's been a classic case of, say, water pollution. Our rivers are dead. I keep saying my city's river Yamuna has a dissolved oxygen level of zero, which means technically it is dead. It has just not been cremated. Our water bodies are getting more and more polluted. But we can either put RO machine, a water purifier, which will clean the water which we drink, or we just move to bottled water if we can afford it. But where is the substitute for air? We will need to breathe. And so it's a great equalizer. It also means that the air shed is one. If we pollute because of our cars, it'll get added to the same air shed where, say, a poor woman who does not have access to clean cooking fuel and uses biomass to cook, her pollution will also get added, which really means that we need to act and we need to act in a way that all sources of pollution can be dealt with and that we can provide ways in which the poorest who have no alternative but to use uh, biomass, whether it is cow dung, whether it is wood for cooking, which is very polluting, can also move to clean cooking fuel. So this is the challenge. Now the big question that you will ask is, so what are we doing about it? And this is the zillion dollar question. Sometime in 2019, the government of India launched what is known as the National Clean Air Action Program, NCAP. It was a program which was designed and very rightly so, government said, for too long the Supreme Court has been taking action 
on air, on air pollution now it is our responsibility we will act it set up a program it set up finances for the program it set up an entire system to monitor what cities are doing a plan and a program for it some 20000 crore has been allocated for 133 cities which are called non attainment cities cities that don't meet the air pollution required level now my colleagues have recently published an assessment of this program because the aim of this is to understand what is happening what needs to be done and in this assessment what we really find is that there are fundamental flaws in what is being done and the biggest flaw is that the government is monitoring air quality based on what we understand in the science of air pollution as coarse particles not the tiny particles pm10 rather than pm2.5 which also means and pm10 comes from largely dust and its coarse particles which means that the bulk of the money that is being spent under a national clean air action program is now being spent for dust control over 60% now clearly this means the program for controlling air quality is off track and we need to bring it back on track so what do we need to do and as i discuss what we need to do i thought i would give you a little bit a history of what's happened up till now my journey on air pollution started almost 3 decades ago mid 90s um, our uh, my colleague anil agarwal um, made us work on a report which we titled slow murder the report was called slow murder because we said that this is this pollution does not kill us overnight but it kills us slowly and no doctor gives you a certificate saying that this you are got asthma because of this pollution so this is slow murder when we did this report we essentially pointed that the key problem was the quality of fuel and the emission standards of our vehicles it became a hotly contested issue it became an issue in which the major automobile manufacturers were, were contested the data on the fact that air pollution firstly was a problem and secondly that the small and the tiny particles that I, that we now know is pm 2.5 are actually dangerous for our health i have many scars my colleagues have many scars from this battle that we went through at that time we got emission standards remember at that time in 19 in the mid 90s india had 10000 parts per million of sulfur in our diesel today we have 10 parts per million that journey of improving the quality of fuel of improving the emission standards from vehicles was critical in making sure that we could secure our right to clean air in the early 2000 we also moved towards compressed natural gas now as i said in the mid 90s our pollution our diesel quality was so poor that it would take us two decades to clean it up but we found that if you change the fuel you move towards compressed natural gas you would actually get the same emission standards as you would from what is today known as bharat stage 4 which came two decades later now this change of fuel meant again a very tough battle it meant bringing in a new fuel to our uh, city it meant opening uh, fuel pl- uh, pumps which could supply cng the fact that when the supreme court was listening to this matter and directing action on it the court said 
you know, we understand what's going on. We know that this transition will be tough, but it has to happen because it is for the quality of air, it is for our health. In the period between 2001 to 2003, Delhi brought in 200,000 vehicles running on compressed natural gas. It was a massive transformation. Now, I'm again using this and explaining this because the scale is important. We have to understand that the crisis will grow every day and new sources of pollution will come every day. If we want to deal with it, we need a scale in the solution which actually helps us to be able to drive a solution which can make a difference. And in this episode, I want to end at this point to tell you, since then we have seen some action, but not enough. We have a crisis of large numbers of vehicles on our roads, which is adding to pollution. We have the use of coal in our industry, which is adding to the pollution in our city and our neighboring areas. We have waste burning that is happening, which is adding to pollution. We need an action agenda and we need it fast. We cannot lose any more time in making plans, in looking at what is needs to be done, another committee, another plan. We need to drive the action at the scale that is needed. 